And one of the nation's leading health experts on this pandemic is one of Baltimore's very own. You may remember Dr. Lena Wynn for our, her tenure as Baltimore City's health commissioner, but little has been known about her personal past. Denise is here now to show us another side of Dr. Wynn. Denise. Well, Vic and Rick, we all got to know Dr. Wynn interviewing her over the years when she was uh, Baltimore City's health commissioner. But I really knew nothing about Lena's life until I read her fascinating book, Lifelines. It is the story of her life journey, and it opens with a pivotal event, the needless death of a little boy with asthma. I was maybe 10 at the time. This was a neighbor boy who lived in an apartment next to us. I saw this boy and knew he needed help, but his grandmother was too afraid to call for help because they were undocumented. And she was afraid that the immigration authorities would show up. And as a result, he died. This boy died. You saw him die. I saw him die literally in front of me. Sitting in the backyard of her Baltimore home, Dr. Wen still gets angry, talking about a broken system where not everyone has equal access to health care. And I write in this book about how the opposite of poverty is health. Lena knows about poverty. Born in Shanghai, China, she and her parents moved to the U.S. when she was seven. When we first came to the U.S., we had $40. My parents both worked multiple jobs, but we still had trouble making ends meet. And I remember that there were two issues that my parents talked about every day. They worried about every day. They argued about every day. And that was money and our immigration status. All these memories came flooding back as she wrote Lifelines. There was a lot that I had not thought about my own childhood, a lot that I had maybe tuned out on purpose because there were parts of my childhood that were really hard. Her childhood included eviction and even homelessness. Yet, she entered college at the age of 13. Medical school at 18 was a Rhodes Scholar, is now a professor, doctor, writer, and CNN analyst. Yet, nothing about this remarkably successful life has been easy. I actually felt pretty nervous when the book first came out because there were so many parts of my upbringing in my life that at different points of my life were sources of shame. And it was shame. And it was hard for me to share. What would be a source of shame? Well, I talked in Lifelines about how I grew up with a severe speech impediment and how I hid more than anything. I wanted to not let anyone see me struggle and stutter. Stuttering postpartum depression. The discipline and the drive to overcome may originate with her mother. When I came to the U.S., I didn't speak any English, and she knew that I needed to learn English very quickly. And so she said to me, You have to memorize a hundred vocabulary words every day. When she got home, she would quiz me on a hundred words. Tragically, her mother did not live to meet Lena's two children. In the book, Lena says, My life is a journey into public health. And in 2014, that journey led her to Baltimore. I was so excited and, and, um, and so grateful to have had the opportunity to have my dream job, which was to become the city's doctor and the Baltimore Health Commissioner. And that was your dream job? Oh, absolutely. I mean, her accomplishments as health commissioner are cataloged in the book, and they are many. She was, as always, hardworking, dedicated, ambitious, and tenacious. Well, it's interesting. I would add one more word to what I've been, mm -hmm. which is lucky. If my parents were not granted political asylum, I might be sitting in front of you today as a dreamer. If I didn't have the mentors that I did in college, I probably wouldn't have become a doctor. Congressman Elijah Cummings, who I talk about a lot in the book, and I named my son Eli after him, he liked to say that you turn your pain into your passion that is your purpose. Pain, passion, and purpose. We've all been through substantial hardships at different times in our lives, and actually that's why I chose to tell my own story. Now, before our meeting, Dr. Wen asked not to discuss her troubled and brief tenure as head of Planned Parenthood, but that chapter is fully explored in her book, which is now available. And Tuesday evening at 7.30, you can watch my entire unedited interview with Dr. Wen on CBSN Baltimore. Vic?